the name of God, amen. I, John W. Stevens of Yanceyville, in the county of Caswell, in the great state of North Carolina, on the seventh day of April, in the year of our Lord, 1870. Being in good health and of sound mind, do hereby make and publish this, my last will and testament, and bequeath all my property to my wife, Martha Stevens, with two-thirds to be held in trust for the use of my children, to be equally divided as they shall respectfully attain majority. The remaining one-third I give and bequeath to my wife, to be her own sole estate without charge or limitation. You don't understand, Senator. You didn't hear these men. They're planning to kill you today. I'm not afraid of the gentry in this county. are going to be in that courthouse today. The danger is real. Listen to James. I'm ready for violence if it comes to that. Why can't you see, Senator, how much you mean to my people? I mean, before you, the poor, simple color folks here, we, we didn't have nothing. You came. You helped us register to vote. We voted Republican and you won, Senator. We stood by you, despite all the threats from the Klan and other folks. Now you think about this, Senator. Think about those people, my people. Think about your own family. Think about what'll happen if you go out here and get yourself killed. Do you want martial law? James, Frank Wiley is considering running for sheriff. If he's elected, things will be better. Today's the Democratic Convention at the courthouse, and I've got to be there to promise him the votes of the Republicans and the Cullens. Uh, I just don't know, Senator. It's just, it's just something about that man. I, I don't trust him. He was a good and fair sheriff during the war. He's a peaceable and law-abiding fella. I got a new will, and I just got some insurance. There's more than enough to, to provide for you and the girls if anything should happen to me. Damn the money, John. We need you. You can't just walk in there and let them kill you. You know how much I love you and my girls. I just don't think the danger is as, as real as y'all think. Listen to James. It's nothing more that I can do, Senator. All I, all I can do is pray for you. Oh, pray for them. Thank you. 
Don't worry about it. Ever I since you came here from Reno, he's done nothing to cause trouble. I said, Order. 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 He has destroyed our livelihood and our means of support. He has burned our barns and our crops, including yours, Captain Lee. Objection. There is no direct evidence linking Mr. Stevens to these crimes. Mr. Denny, you have been selected to represent Chicken Stevens in this trial. You will have your opportunity to present his defense. Overruled. <laughs> Mr. Denny. There is no direct evidence that Chicken Stevens killed his mother either. But is there a man here, including yourself, Mr. Denny, who really believes that his mother rolled out of bed and sliced her jugular on a chamber pot? The defense has stipulated Chicken Stevens' love for the colored man. He has taught them how to read. He has registered them to vote, and he has gotten himself elected their senator. He has advanced his fortune, trotting the backs of all the good men of this county, illegally and immorally. Our only recourse is to bring him to justice for these criminal actions. he's doing here at the Democratic Convention. He ordered the Yanceyville Hotel burned to the ground. Crops and houses, too. And he murdered his mother. Officer, you have a great interest in the upcoming elections, and I'm both pleased and honored to be considered for nomination as your candidate for the State House. I want to discuss with you today just one thing. The one thing that is of overriding importance in all of our lives. The war. We all suffered grievously in the war. Friends, family, loved ones are gone. Homes, businesses are destroyed. But if we continue to let it, these bitter memories of the war will taint our lives forever. Gentlemen, ladies, I am here today to tell you that it is time we put the war behind us. We have no choice. We must rebuild and move on. Do you not understand that the sooner we accept the changes in the law and adapt to them, the sooner we can get back to, to farming and living, James. raising our children? This is the message I bring to you today. And with your help, this is the message I will carry with me to Raleigh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Has the jury reached a verdict? We have. Chicken Stevens is guilty and should be put to death. With a guilty verdict being determined for crimes enumerated here against the citizens of this county and the state of North Carolina, John Stevens is hereby sentenced to death. Senator Stevens, can I ask you further about the county sheriff's office? Mr. Wiley, 
You're the best chance this county has to maintain order. I'm prepared to bring you the support of the Republican voters, including the colored. Let's go downstairs and talk. I want to ask you about what you expect in return for this accord. All right, let's go. children it's not too late for them but it's too late for you chicken stevens <laughs> oh. i can't do this thing oh. Oh. murder a man in cold blood he was tried by a jury of his peers found guilty of capital crimes and sentenced to death now do it no daddy I'll find the Senator Mel. Now bring him home. I promise. On May 21st, 1870, John Stevens was stabbed and strangled to death inside the Caswell County Courthouse. The conspirators that perpetrated this crime, sworn to secrecy, went to their graves without revealing the true story of the murder. In a sealed document, opened only after his death, John G. Lee finally told the story of what happened. <laughs> 